Hi everyone. Um, seen a lot of people um, powering um, the uh, CFL fluorescent light bulbs from the Deanies and Jewel Thieves. Um, now don't get me wrong, this is all well and good, but no one's actually looked into um, the workings of a CFL bulb. So, I thought I'd do it. Right. First of all, how does a CFL actually work? Um, it's quite simple, really. Um, ignoring all the uh, the bends that are in them, they are effectively a glass tube with two electrodes, one at each end, and it is filled with um, um, off the top of my head, I can't remember what gas it is. Um, it's some form of um, um, is it argon? Uh, something like that. Anyway, what happens is when the voltage across the two electrodes reach a certain point, it <coughs> well sparks across effectively, um, but not in sort of a lightning type way. Um, this causes the gas itself to glow. Um, resulting in light. Um, so, the question is how much voltage is actually needed? Um, well, here in the UK um, our main supply is 240 volts 50 hertz. Um, that is not enough to cause the spark. Okay, in the US and Canada it's 110 60 hertz. Um, the rest of Europe I have no idea. I think it's 110 as well. Um, I've got a sneak suspicion we're the only one running 240. But oh well. Anyway, so, how does a CFL get the required voltage um, in order to cause the spark? Well, let's take a look. First of all, that is the tubes for the CFL. Right, nice little triangle. There. And if you look on the bottom, two electrodes there and there. Okay, so that's pretty much simple. Yes, I have taken one apart. Of course. How are you going to look inside one if you don't take it apart? Right, and um, before you ask, um, I bought the wrong type of uh, fitting. I bought a screw fitting, which is what this one was, and um, well, by mistake, and we all have the bayonet connections. But oh well. Right, over here, uh, yep, I'm in close-up mode. Right, This is a little circuit board that's inside it. Now straight away people can spot a transformer that's in there. Right, that gives you some clue. So, let's start from the beginning. Right, power connections. Right, that's where the mains comes in. That on there is a resistor. It's uh, brown, black, black, gold, I think. No, black, brown, black, black, silver. Right, so that comes in. You have... Um, a suppressor and a capacitor there to get rid of um, any transients that might be on the uh, main supply. Immediately behind that, I don't know if you can see it, let's take a look. Right, immediately behind that there are four diodes. Now if you flip it over, look at the circuit underneath. Right, those four diodes act as a rectifier and go into that big capacitor there. It's not exactly big. 400 volts, 4.7 UF. Okay, so that takes our 240 volt main supply into DC. Lovely. Right, what's behind it? Okay, well that to me looks very much like a, um, a dual thief type perm um, set up. It's got yellow wire there, red wire there, 
underneath there, just above my thumb, is blue set, which is quite interesting. It's labelled up as um, T1 on the board, which I find quite curious because T is transformer. Hmm. Very curious. Okay. On each side, you can see those two black things. And yes, they look very much like transistors. And you're absolutely right. Judging by the way that the, you're, they're connected, um, I would say that whole thing there, two trans transistors, right, is effectively doing the same thing as a dual peak, basically. Um, a couple of capacitors, which I'm guessing are for smoothing. Um, and the the output from that transformer goes straight to those pins, right? Which goes straight to the um, the electrodes on there. So it looks like um, the 240 volts that comes in uh, gets converted to DC and then sent through a dual dual thief. Or circuit similar to that, anyway. Uh, I mean, I find that t quite curious, to be honest. It raises the question as to uh, exactly how high does the voltage actually get sent. And no, I am not going to plug it in. I don't fancy zapping myself. If someone else wants to uh, take one of these apart, plug it in, stick a multimeter across it, go right ahead. I have a sneaky suspicion it's over a thousand volts. So, uh, be my guest on that one. Because, um, personally, I like my life. I like to keep living. But, anyway. That's the little board thing inside. Um, from what I can see from the circuit underneath and the components, um, it uses a dual thief type circuit, or rather two of them, to uh, basically make a high voltage pulse that goes through the um, the tube. So, what's actually happening with the Bedini? Um, well, it's simple. The Bedini is putting out um, somewhere between 100 and 200 volts um, now if you've got the uh, if you're in the US then this circuit is going to be running off 110 volts so provided you can um, charge this capacitor enough with 110 volts um, then you will fully light a Bedini so there we go um, all you need to do really is to supply it with enough pulses to um, maintain the 110 volts in the in the capacitor. So quite literally, it is that simple. To be perfectly honest, um, I mean, yeah, don't get me wrong. Um, most Bedinis don't output enough to uh, uh, maintain the voltage into these things. So, those that have done it, uh, more power to them. Um, those that wish to do it, um, well, there you have it basically. That's what's inside a CFL. Um, and basically design a circuit to um, power power the um, the board that's in these things um, hopefully that will be useful to someone and um, well I'll talk to you later as always any questions feel free to email me cheers guys people oh.